Hi everyone, my name is Garmin from New Leaf Designs and in this tutorial video I'm going to show you how to knit these socks from the toe up two at a time. <laughs> I know many new sock knitters really want to know how to knit socks two at a time and in this tutorial video I'm going to show you each and every step, how to cast on, how to increase, how to change color, how to knit the heel, how to knit the cuffs, how to cast off, everything from start to finish. And the pattern that I'm using for these socks is the classic New Leaf socks pattern, which is my own pattern. It's my favorite sock recipe that I've perfected over the years that I've been sock knitting. Um, and you can find it in the description below. I've got it as a free version on my website and you can buy the PDF version in my Ravelry shop or in my web shop. If you've landed on this video and you think I'd love to knit socks but two at a time is too much for me, then I do also have the tutorial video where I just knit one sock at a time and I will be sure to link that down below as well. For the two at a time socks we are going to be using the same yarns as I'm using for my one at a time sock and that is Scapius Metropolis which I'm using for the solid colored parts of the sock, the toes, heels and cuffs. So Scapius Metropolis it is a 75% merino and 25% nylon sock blend. Uh, it's a beautiful yarn, my all-time favorite. Um, for two at a time, you will need to split it into two balls because otherwise it won't work. <laughs> for the striped part of the sock, we are using the self-striping Scapius Downtown, a super fun sock yarn that will create all of these lovely stripes all by itself. They come in 50 gram balls. Again, they're 75% merino, 25% nylon. Get two balls of these so you can work on one ball for each sock. A small disclaimer because for the smallest two sizes, you, you would only need one ball. So that could be an option if you want to knit either the first or the second size to just take one ball and split it down the middle. Um, but if you get two, you can you can make them as long as you want. You can make knee-high socks. <laughs> in this video, we will be casting on with Judy's Magic Cast On, then we will be doing the increases. We will change to the main color yarn. For the heels, we are doing the German Schurter heel. We are learning how to close the gap at the heel. Uh, and then we are doing a nice ripped cuff with a stretchy bind off. Those are all of the techniques that I will show you in this video. And needle wise, I am using 2.25 millimeter needles. Uh, for two at a time socks, I prefer using a 100 centimeter long cord. Um, for single socks, you can also use 80 centimeter long cord and 80 centimeters would also work for two at a time. It will just be a little bit more cramped, but it's totally doable. Um, so if you're on the fence about trying two at a time socks and you only have 80 centimeter long needle, just give it a try. Um, if you want to use DPNs, sure, but it won't be two at a time socks. You can, you can knit them concurrently, but um, it won't be exactly two at a time socks. So just so you know. Right, so get your needles, get your yarn, and we'll cast on. All right, so for the two at a time socks, we need our two balls of the yarn A, of the toe, uh, heel, and cuff color. And I have one ball of Scabies Metropolis, and I just wound off a little bit. Uh, so we have two separate balls, and for downtown I have two separate balls for that as well. Needle-wise, I have the same size needle as for my single sock, uh, which is 2.25 millimeter, uh, but I do have a slightly longer cable. Usually I use uh, 80 centimeters for socks, uh, but for two at a time I prefer 100 centimeters. It can definitely be done on 80 centimeters, and it can also definitely be done on, say, one, 120 um, length cable, I mean 120 centimeters length cable uh, but I just feel that the 100 centimeters is the um, just the nicest option so um, feel free to you know pick the needle that you find most comfortable 
Um, right. And we are also going to be using Judy's Magic Cast On. Basically, all of the techniques are going to be the same as for the single sock, but I'm going to show you how to do them for two socks at a time. Um, I will not be going into each of the techniques with as much depth, so I would definitely not do this as your first sock project. <laughs> um, and if you, if you want some more um, explanation, then feel free to check out the single sock videos. So I'll be starting with Judy's Magic Cast On and I will be starting with this this ball first and we want the about the same amount of yarn tail as usual so about 20 centimeters and i'm going to cast on the same amount of stitches so that's uh, 10 stitches on each side for the size that i want to knit drape it over the back needle cross the yarn bring those needle tips together and we cast on 10 stitches on each side okay i've actually exactly done 10. okay and now we move on to the second sock. So the difficult part is here that this one does not slide off the needles. So I'm, go I'm just going to keep a hold on it, but because it is not as close to the tips of the needles, it's also not as easy for the stitches to fall off. So taking second yarn and again about 20 centimeters of tail make sure that the needles are not twisted so that you're looking at the same side and we're also going to be casting on 10 stitches on each side Seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. All right, we got our two cast ons right here. And I'm going to tell you about yarn maneuvering also, but I'm going to focus on the techniques right now. So we move our cable. I mean, we move our needles so that the tips are facing to the right. I'm going to slide out that bottom needle now so that for both sets, the kind of bottom row is on the cable and the top row is on the needle. Right. So I want to hold on to this piece of yarn because otherwise my stitch will slip off the needle and wrapping around with the ball yarn and I did check to be sure that I'm using the correct yarn knitting to the end of this row and then I'm moving on to the second sock this is I'm going to name this sock number one right now um, sock number one the yarn is on the left sock number two the yarn is on the right here so while I work on sock number two and first making sure that the yarn tail going to this little loose stitch here is secured in my left hand and then I'm gonna make sure that I grab this yarn 
uh, that it goes underneath uh, yarn, let's say yarn one. I don't want to pick it up here because then I'm en enclosing this yarn in there, right? So, but I think for most of you th that will be intuitive. Knit across all of those stitches. Right. And you can see the stitches of both socks are kind of squished together now. Doesn't matter. I can just take them apart like this again. And now to turn my work, I'm not going to turn it like this because then my yarns will get even more tangled. But I'm going to rotate them like this. So, and you're going to alternate that basically, turning it this way, and then when you need to turn it again, turning it that way. That is basically going to make sure that your yarns don't get tangled. Okay, uh, and we are always going to work on the sock first that is closest to the tips. So, um, and again, as for the single sock, where the yarn is, that's the needle that we're going to slide out. Inserting it with the first stitch here and knitting. And this side, we haven't knit across this side before. This is still the cast on, even though it feels like the cast on is a long time ago. <laughs> but we are knitting twice as much because we're knitting twice the amount of socks. Okay, round one on this sock is done. Then comes the, the finishing of the first round of this sock. And now I've completed one full round for both socks. And now we get to rotate our work. And now we rotate it clockwise. And we start our increase round. So I'm putting my needles into position. The yarns are coming from the twisted like from the opposite direction again, but that is fine. And I am starting my increase round as I normally do. So I increase on the first stitch. And then I will increase on the, is it first to last or second to last? Um, at least I will knit until two stitches are left and then increase on that stitch. Here we are increasing again using the knit front back, knitting the last stitch. So now I've done one half of the increases on this sock. I'm moving on to the other sock and again, oh, that's the tail. And again, doing one increase on the first stitch and one increase on the, I don't know what to call it, second to last stitch, I don't know. <laughs> I've now finished the increases on half of the socks. So now at the end of this side, I am going to turn my work counterclockwise 
in order to untwist the yarns I'm going to bring my needles into position and make the increases on this side as well last increase and we finished the round I'm twisting my work clockwise again and now I'm ready for another knit round and you might find it handy to place some stitch markers uh, on this side so you know that this is the beginning of the round. Uh, I always find that helpful, so I'm going to look for a stitch marker to put on there. There, now I know that this is the beginning of the round. And now I will continue knitting on my two sock toes at the same time. And the same things that you would do, the same techniques that you would do for a single sock kind of also apply to two at a time socks. So when you have enough fabric in between your needles, you're going to want to make sure that you hold the cable to your needle uh, to minimize the ladders on the side. I'll show you here so I want to bring this cable I, uh, I want to hold it to my needle as close as I can to minimize any ladders that may be forming on the sides but you will probably know this already So now you can continue knitting until you have your number of stitches that it says in the pattern. And then when you have the correct number of stitches on each of the socks, we can cut off these strands and we can attach our main color from Escape East Downtown. And to attach the new yarn, for the self-striping yarn, I'm winding off as much yarn as I need until I get to the first color change because that is when you want to attach it to your yarn because then it will start on a full stripe. And the same with this ball here, there's just a little bit of yarn before the first color change. So that's where we are going to attach it to our work and we keep going in the same order so you first do the front on sock one then the front on sock two then the back on sock two and then the back on sock one and i i keep my stitch marker here because it's just handy to know when you're at the beginning of, of the round so then I take my main color yarn and I attach it right after the color change and so I will snip off well I will probably just get and snip the tag off and use this to weave weave in the end and it doesn't matter that the end that I'm going to be weaving in is a different color because you won't be able to see that. So I will be knitting across this sock. So I've just done the front of the first sock. So now I'm going to work the second sock. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to be attaching this end there 
And for two at a time socks, I always work from the center of the bow just because it makes it way more manageable. Um, you know, to manage the yarns and to, to not get them tangled. I've just turned my work and so as you can see now, my yarns are crossed. So I have to make sure that when I turn my work again, that I turn it this way so that my yarns are no longer crossed. Um, and that is just really helpful for yarn management. And basically, you keep doing this <laughs> until your socks are of the correct length to start the heel. So, um, in the pattern, you will find the length measurement, and you'll measure that from the tip of the toe. Um, and when you've reached that length measurement, uh, then it's time to put in the heel, and I will meet you back when it is time to do so. Welcome back. I have now knit up both socks until they have the length measurement that I need. And the length measurement is noted in the pattern and you measure from the cast on point of the toe right up until the last row that you did. And now we are going to do the heel in the solid color again. And we get to decide whether we want to place the heel on this side or on this side. And I know that I placed this marker here, which means this is technically the front, but we don't have to um, we can also knit the heel here and um, you might be asking yourself what difference does it make well with self-striping yarns you usually have a spot where the colors kind of bleed into each other or you know where you have a jog where you go from one color to the next and if you're really picky about that um, then you can compare the sides and see which one you like best and that would then be the side that you don't knit the heel on right because where you knit the heel that's going to be the sole of the sock so the side that you're not going to see as much so if you compare the sides and one of them seems prettier to you then you can go ahead and knit the heel on the other side um, I'm just going to knit the heel according to the pattern, which is on needle two, so that's the second half of the stitches. And I'm going to treat this as the front of my sock. So I'm just going to knit across needle one, and then for needle two, I'm going to follow the heel instructions. All right, we've now knit across needle one. We turn to needle two. And here we work across the stitches with yarn A. So that's the yarn that we needed for the toes. Now for two at a time socks, uh, the heel is actually one of the parts that you don't work two at a time. You complete the heel on this sock first then move on to the heel on this sock. So um, it's also worth noting that you don't need two separate balls of the yarn here. We only needed two separate balls for the toes and later on for the cuffs. Uh, but for the heel, um, we can just use one of them. And I'm still debating whether I will leave yarn be hanging here. Um, I think I will, but if it gets, if it just gets too cumbersome to have these attached, then feel free to cut them and, you know, you can join the yarn back later. Um, but I do think, if I remember correctly, that we will be able to continue seamlessly if you leave them on. So I'm going to leave a bit more 
of a tail than I usually would simply because at the heel you might want to um, close up a gap um, and we are going to do that while knitting it uh, but an extra end here is always helpful so I'm just going to knit across all of these stitches on needle two so that means the second half of your stitches I have now knit until the end of this needle and I'm not going to continue with this sock but I'm going to continue knitting the heel on this sock and I'm going to take a look at the pattern together with you and it says turn your work to knit in rows so we are going to turn our work so that we are seeing the inside of our sock and we are looking at the purl stitches of this sock. Um, let me take my needle and then it says heel row one uh, between brackets it says WS that means wrong side and that's true this is the wrong side of our work. Um, it says with yarn in front uh, and the yarn is already in front so we don't have to do anything special for that. Slip one purl wise so we slip this stitch purl wise that means go in as if to purl slip it off this needle onto this one and then lift the yarn from the front upwards over the right hand needle to the back of your work okay so that's a whole mouthful but then it just means to take this yarn and pull it to the back and usually, right, so this is usually a no-go in knitting. Uh, usually when you want to pull your yarn to the back, you move it in between the needles, right? But here we are going to break the knitting rules a little bit and pull it over the needle and really pull it tight so that you see this loop almost disappearing. And what you see here is that instead of the one stitch or the one loop that we have when we pull the stitch back we see two loops on our needle and that's why this is called a double stitch and the very first stitch is easy to recognize because it will have the color of the yarn you used in the row below um, now we have the yarn pulled firmly to the back but we are going to knit i mean we are going to work purl stitches so that means we need our yarn in the front and now we are going to move our yarn in between the needles forward, right? Because that keeps this double stitch intact. So with the yarn forward again, purl all stitches until the end of needle two and turn. So we are going to purl these stitches and especially for the first stitch, keep your tension on this yarn while knitting it because that makes these double stitches, makes them very tight. And the tighter they are, um, the more beautiful uh, your heel will be. It will be more, um, yeah, it will be just a bit neater. Um, if, you're, if you've knit a sock and the heel looks a bit sloppy, it's, it's probably because the double stitches are a bit loose. So we are knitting until the end of needle two. And the very last stitch of this needle uh, may be very loose because that's where our yarn end is. So just knit that stitch and if it bothers you, just pull on that end again. Now we're going to turn our work and now, now we're at row two 
and between brackets it says rs that means right side and that is correct because we see the right side of our work and uh, now we are also going to create a double stitch on this side of the sock and again it says with yarn in front so we are going to take this yarn to the front uh, slip one purl wise so again purl wise not knit wise uh, we are going to insert our needle as if to purl and slip that stitch off the needle and I'm just holding on to this yarn end right here because I don't want you know I don't want stitches getting loose um, okay what next and lift yarn to back as before so I'm tugging on this yarn and holding it to the back and it will look a little bit different on this side uh, on this side it will kind of look as if the two loops are crossed it will kind of seem like a like a little knot on the needle and then knit all stitches until you reach the next double stitch okay so we are going to knit all stitches what does that mean for our yarn it stays at the back because for knit stitches we need our yarn in the back and again for the first uh well for the first maybe two stitches i'm going to keep a good tension on this yarn so I'm holding it very tightly and now we are knitting until the next double stitch and that means well here it's it's very obvious uh, this is the double stitch so we are knitting all of these stitches up until that double stitch and we are leaving the double stitch on the needle and I will meet you there I'm knitting up until the double stitch and I'm leaving that stitch on the needle and then I turn my work um, and then we look at row three of the pattern and it says with yarn in front we have our yarn in front uh, slip one purl wise and lift the yarn over the needle to the back and we are forming another double stitch here and the only difference with the first one is that it's a different color so we have our double stitch we are going to be making purl stitches so we need our yarn at the front again so I'm moving it to the front holding it tight and then purling these stitches and we need to purl all stitches until the next double stitch and on this side it's a it's a bit more difficult to recognize it because it's in the same color so you want to um, practice recognizing that knot on top of the needle there and in this case it's still a little bit easier because it's the f very first stitch on this needle and if you pull just the very first loop that you see then the other half of that double stitch will kind of be pulled with it so you know that that is the entire double stitch and we need to knit or purl all of these stitches um, but for future rows it will be more and more difficult because maybe you lose track of how many double stitches you have or maybe it gets a little muddled and this is where I see uh, most of the mistakes in heel knitting which is nothing serious and nothing that you can't overcome or fix uh, you won't have to rip it out um, but the most common heel knitting mistakes are that you don't knit up until um, the double stitch but that you leave one or two normal stitches in between um, and then the heel just gets a little bit shallower but it's still fine uh, so we are going to purl all stitches until that double stitch I'm now at the double stitch 
and I am leaving that on the left hand needle and please please be careful to not drop it off the needle because then you will need to start over with your heel so please keep an eye on it and we will turn our work and take a look at the pattern um, it says repeat rows two and three until you have a number of stitches either 14 or 12 um, left in between the double stitches ending with a right side row so what does that mean repeat rows two and three so now we are uh, at the right side and row two is a right side row so for every time you're at the right side you follow the instructions for row two and every time you're at the wrong side you follow the instructions for row three and what does it mean when i say this many stitches in between the double stitches that means that on the left hand side you take the double stitches on the right hand side you take the double stitches and then you count the stitches in between and each row right we are going to make a double stitch here now and then we're going to knit across make a double stitch there knit across make a double stitch there so we have less and less and less stitches in between uh, so eventually you'll get to that number that's in the pattern uh, and when you get there I will meet you back for the next step. I've just completed uh, knitting all of the double stitches until I have only 14 stitches in between. And I'm just going to show you what that looks like and where, um, where I'm at in the pattern. I have all of my stitches on the left hand side I have them on my left needle and I have seven double stitches which may be different for you um, and then on the right hand side I also should have seven double stitches yes that is true and in between I have three six nine ten thirteen no, that's not correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven double stitches, and then one, two, three, ten, fourteen. Okay, so I have my fourteen stitches. Um, so I ended on a right side row, as the pattern says, and I'm ending here. So on this row, I've done I've made the double stitch and then I've knit up until the next double stitch and that's where you want to end uh, part one of the heel and I'm just going to read from the pattern so that you know where I am it says do not turn on your last right side row but continue as follows and then it says row one continued um, also on the right side Knit the first double stitch as if it were one stitch and turn. So I'm going to knit that stitch and then turn my work. And knitting a double stitch, um, it, it just sounds tricky, but it really isn't. Uh, you go underneath all of the loops and knit it. And if you're unsure, um, which loops to pick up then you take your right hand needle and you touch the left hand needle just on the other side of that double stitch and then you want to follow that left hand needle to the tip and all of these loops that are now on your needle those that that is the entire double stitch and you just want to make sure that you've not split the stitch in any way and then you uh, wrap your yarn and pull it through now we're going to turn our work so we are now at row two which is on the wrong side 
and we slip one pearlwise, tuck in firmly. Uh, so we keep a good tension on this yarn, but it's very important that you don't take it to the back again because we are not, we are done with creating double stitches. Right now we are just knitting them. So uh, we hold the yarn firmly, then purl until next double stitch. So we are now going to purl uh, all stitches until we get to the next double stitch and then purl that one as well. I've purled all stitches and we are now at the next double stitch and we are purling this double stitch as if it is one stitch. So we catch all of the loops, make sure you're not splitting the stitch, you wrap the yarn around and you purl the double stitch as if it is one stitch. Then we turn our work and we are now at row three and here the yarn stays at the back we don't have to take it to the front uh, we slip one stitch purl wise that's still the same and you tug on the yarn we keep a tension on it but you don't have to move it anywhere and now we are knitting until the next double stitch so we are knitting across and before we get to the double stitch there will be quite a gap right here this gap is completely normal and you can just knit the next double stitch and there might still be gaps there and what influences that is how tightly you've pulled the yarn while making the double stitch. The tighter you've pulled it, the smaller these holes will be. Um, so we've worked this double stitch, so now we are turning to the wrong side again. And we are repeating rows two and three. And the two rows are basically the same because on each of them, you slip the first stitch purlwise, you tug on the yarn, and then you work the stitches until the next double stitch, and then work the double stitch as if it were one stitch. Um, so we are purling towards the next double stitch, and before this double stitch there will also be a gap. So I will uh, continue doing this and I will meet you back until all of the double stitches have been worked. I am now coming up to the very last double stitch that needs to be worked. And that's on this side. So the last row that I'm doing is a purl row. There, we've now knit, or purled, the double stitch. Do make uh, sure that you're keeping this one tight. You can put that into the sock. And then now we are continuing with the main color, or the main yarn, which is the self-striping yarn. And we are going to cut this yarn and then we're going to continue with this yarn with our escapees downtown we are going to knit across the heel with our main yarn but um, before we do that we want to pick up a couple stitches here and that is because if we were just to join like this and and knit let me let me just do a couple stitches and you would see a gap here it's pretty large right now and of course you could use these um, ends right here to sew that up and that would be absolutely fine uh, but we have some techniques we can use to close up this gap 
And what we want to do is that we want to pick up stitches, but obviously we want to pick up stitches so that it closes the gap. We don't want to pick up stitches where it would create new gaps. So, and the best way I found to pick up stitches is to look at this rightmost column of stitches on needle two, so on the heel needle. Uh, when you follow this stitch, when you follow the column of stitches below that, that is the ideal spot to pick up stitches. And we are going to pick up stitches kind of like in the middle of, of this gap. And we are not uh, going to pick up the side of these stitches because that usually tends to leave a hole as well. However, you know, however small that hole is. But we are going to use the middle bar of these stitches. And this horizontal bar or the middle bar is not usually visible. But when you dip into a stitch, there it is. And this is also the bar that you use for mattress stitching. Um, so I want to grab that middle bar because if we tug on that, it doesn't really create a hole. It just makes it just makes it a little bit tighter, if anything. And we are going to do that for two stitches in a row. So I'm going to pick up two bars like this. I'm going to put them on this needle. And this thread is getting in the way there. And then I'm going to knit each of these two strands individually. So I'm creating two stitches. And now this might still leave a bit of a gap, but it's going to be much smaller than if we were to do nothing at all. And I found that this is the, is the best method I found so far. Uh, so now I'm going to continue knitting across the heel and then I'll meet you back on the other side. I've now knit across all of the heel stitches and we've come to the other side. And just before we're going to continue with the second sock, I want to finish this uh, just picking up of stitches on this sock so that we have closed the chapter. And this will be a little bit fiddly just because our left hand needle is attached to the other sock. But essentially, we are going to be doing the same thing. So we are going to be looking at the um, column of stitches that comes from the edge of the heel. And you can see there's a little bend in this one, a little corner. Uh, but we want to have, we want to pick up stitches here. And I'm going to do that with my left hand needle. And I want to pick up this one, no, the one before that, and this one. Because I want to pick up as many stitches as I did for the other side. We want to keep it symmetrical. And it's also going to be in the middle of this gap. So I've picked it up with my left hand needle, so they get to stay there for now. And then I will knit them one by one with my right hand needle. And now I have picked up stitches here. And now we have finished one heel on the first sock. And now we are going to do exactly the same process for the second sock. So you are going to Attach your solid color yarn, your Scapius Metropolis. You're going to knit the heel with that, and then you're going to follow all of the same steps until you pick up those stitches to close the gap. And then we will work 
uh, together from there uh, on the leg. I've just finished the second heel, so the heel on the second sock. I do need to pick up stitches here, so I'm just going to show you that again so that hopefully it's a bit more clear. So I'm going to look at the column of stitches that comes from the last stitch on the heel. And on this side, I would look at the column of stitches that comes from the first stitch of the heel. So just to keep it symmetrical. And I'm going to pick up these stitches. And knit into each of those. So that I have picked up two stitches there. And then I'm going to start knitting in the round. So I'm going to switch my needles around again. So I'm inserting my needle here, taking this needle here, so that I can knit in the round again. And those stitches we've just picked up at the sides, I'm going to be decreasing them in a couple of rounds. I've now knit a couple of rounds and in this round I'm going to decrease some of the stitches. I'm going to decrease one stitch on each side of the sock and I'm going to do that on needle two because that's the needle where I increased the stitches onto. So I'm going to knit across needle one. I'm now turning to needle two and I'm just going to make it a bit easier on myself and not decrease the very first stitch but to knit one stitch and then decrease and I decrease with a knit two together simply like that and I will do that one stitch from the edge here one stitch from the edge here and one stitch from the edge here as well I've now decreased two stitches on each sock so that means I still need to decrease two stitches on each sock I'm going to knit maybe two or three rounds before I do that and then I do the decreases in exactly the same way so also one stitch from the edge I've now done another round of decreases and you can see the first decrease here and the second decrease here and you see that there is a couple of rows in between there I think that is three three or four rounds in between so that's how it looks on the right side and on the left side you can see them there and there as well and it's the same on the second sock so I've done all of the decreases and of course if you've decreased or if you've picked up I mean uh, three stitches on each side which is also possible then you would decrease three stitches on each side um, and now we will need to continue knitting the leg until you are satisfied with the length uh, of the sock and um, a regular length a regular sock length I have a handy trick for that that is to fold the sock double at the heel like this and then to lay the leg flat on the foot and then you kind of want it to be um yeah in around 
the toe portion. So you can knit up until where the toe starts and then do the cuff, or you can knit up until uh, the actual cast on and then do the cuff. Um, of course, you can uh, you can decide how long to make your sock, but this is a very standardized um, length to do it this way. Uh, and of course, we have the added bonus of doing a, a stripey sock, so you can just count how many stripes you have for the foot and do as many stripes uh, for the leg. So I think I have about nine stripes. Uh, no, I have ten and a little bit. So let's say I have ten stripes for the foot, then I would want to do 10 stripes for the leg as well. And you can, of course, uh, you can knit up uh, the balls and uh, make them knee highs, which would be even more fun. So yeah, this is totally up to you, but um, I just wanted to give you some more tips. So once you've reached that leg length, uh, we are going to start the cuff and I will meet you back when I get there. So I've just finished the uh, legs of my socks. I like to knit the, you know, I like to knit the stripes so that it matches the end of the stripes on the, on the foot. And then I like to knit the rest uh, in ribbing. So I am going to cut my yarns here. You want to make sure that before you knit the cuff that you use as much of this stripe as you can. Because we're knitting two socks at a time, we're a little bit more limited in that than when you're knitting one sock at a time because the yarns may not exactly match up. Uh, and I can see that the new color is right here and I'm actually not sure if I would be able to knit another needle. They say you need three times the width so I might be able to I might just give that a go let's see if I can do that with the other sock as well so I would need three times the width I actually think I can get out one more needle all right I was able to knit one more row so quite pleased with that. One more thing. I originally wanted to knit this sock just one stripe taller, but on this ball, the next color is going to be this uh, spearmint green, which happens to match almost exactly with my solid contrast color. So um, I'm not going to do that. Um, so I would need, if I would need to, if I would want to make this sock taller, I would want to add two stripes so that I would end on the minty green. And then here as well, I would not end on a, you know, on the spearmint green color. So that would be fine. But I'm also fine with um, just knitting the border right now. So I am turning my work and cutting the yarns laying those aside and now i will need two balls of the solid color metropolis again and to start the cuff we are going to knit one complete round of just knit stitches so one round of stockinette before we start with the ribbing because if you don't know the pearl stitches and ribbing, they kind of elevate the color that you used previously. And that looks like this. So you would be able to see just some slight dots of the previous color in the ribbing. And that can be a really fun effect, but I'm not going for that right now. So I'm just going to knit one row in plain knit stitches. I've done one full round of knit stitches now, so I'm going to 
switch to uh, knit two purl two. You can also do knit one purl one, of course, or your choice of ribbing, but I like knit two purl two. Uh, it cinches in a bit more. Um, so it is, it is in a way more stretchy than um, knit one purl one. So I think it's more comfortable. And you can make the cuff as long or short as you want to. Um, a standard cuff is between 15 and 20 rounds. Uh, I do realize that it's not the most favorite part of the <laughs> knitting project, but um, yeah, I think I'm going to go for at least 15 rounds of ribbing here. I just did my 15 rounds of ribbing so I am ready for the cast off and my favorite method for uh, binding off ribbing is Lori's twisty bind off and for this bind off you can just use the same needle but you might just want to grab a separate needle um, because that could make it easier for you. For this bind off we are going to be twisting the needle and thereby we're going to turn the stitch around its axis um, so that we use more length of yarn so that it becomes stretchier. And the first stitch is just as you would usually do so I'm doing a knit stitch and then from the second stitch you begin the uh, extra steps and I really recommend just holding the yarn in your left hand for this uh, because if you're going to be turning the needle uh, you don't want the yarn to get in the way so even if you're not knitting continental style just hold it in your left hand for now before every knit stitch we are going to be turning the needle away from us so we are going to be turning away so clockwise and turning this stitch around its axis and i'm just going to pull on the yarn a little bit because um, i don't want this stitch to be too long then i'm going to knit this stitch and again you can Take the yarn back and knit it English style, but I'm going to do that continental style. And then I'm going to lift the first stitch over the second. So that's what you do for every knit stitch. Now we have a purl stitch, and that means we are not turning away from us, but turning towards us. So counterclockwise. And then we purl the stitch and lift the first stitch over the second. Okay, I'm gonna do that all um, again and I'm gonna give you some more um, tips on how to remember what to do. So we have a purl stitch, so that means we want to turn towards us, but I'm gonna give you a little tip. You want to use the same direction as you would insert the needle. So for a purl stitch, we would insert the needle like this towards us. So that means you turn towards you. And then you purl, and then you lift this stitch over. The next stitch is a knit stitch where we would insert like this with the needle tip away from us. So that's why we turn away from us and then knit and lift the first stitch over. Now you can see why it might be more helpful to use a separate needle, but it's totally possible on the same circular needle. Um, if you're using a separate needle, um, it does not have to be the same size. You can also use just one size up. So the next stitch is a knit stitch again, so I'm turning away from me. And every time after I turn, I tend to just pull on the yarn a little bit. Oh, I had to do a purl stitch. Okay. So I, I pull on it a little bit just because I don't want the loops to be too big. 
but don't go crazy and pull on it too much because that might, you know, that will not make it as stretchy. Okay, so now I am going to cast off all stitches until here and then I will go ahead and do the second sock. When you're doing the very last stitch on your first sock, you knit it and then you lift the stitch over and then this one stitch remains on your needle while you complete the second sock. So this this will pull larger, that's, that's okay. Um, we are going to have to slide the whole sock over anyway because we need more we need more length on this needle in order to be able to twist it so this sock will just stay here for a minute while we continue to work on the second sock and there you do the very same thing um, the first stitch you knit as normal and then from the second stitch you start the bind off technique and what I think I forgot to mention is that you can hold onto the stitch with your finger so that it doesn't slide off the needle while you turn and that's very helpful for me so I'm going to finish the second sock and then I'm going to finish the first sock so now we only need to finish the first sock so I'll just put the needle back into these stitches put this needle back here and make sure to hold the yarn in my left hand and we are good to go there that was the cast off and now all we have to do is weave in the ends so I'll just take my darning needle and for weaving in ends, I want a darning needle with a sharp tip because I want to be splicing the stitches that I go through. So for the ribbing, I'll just put the thread on the needle. And the first thing that I want to do is close this little gap right here. So I want to go through the next stitch and come back through the last stitch uh, in order to make a nice line there. And then I'm going to thread through the knit stitches on the inside and every time I'm weaving in ends, I am splitting the stitch that I go through. So I'm just taking small pieces of the stitch that I go through so that it, well, it has two benefits. It is more secure and it doesn't show on the outside. And I'm going to do that until I reach the stockinette part. And then here I'm going to weave in diagonally in these purl stitches. And again, I'm going to split all of these stitches and it is fine as it is right now but I like to just turn the corner and go in a different direction because that makes it really difficult for this end to unravel and for the other ends where I am changing color see there's a hole 
where you are going from one col color to the next I make sure that this strand you know if I would weave it in in this direction the whole remains so this thread I want to weave it in that way and this thread I want to weave it in this way so that we close up that gap right there and I'm using the same technique splitting the stitches going diagonally through those purl bumps changing direction there and that's it now to do the same with this one and there we go and while weaving in the ends for the toes just make sure that you're not making it super bumpy um, if it's just like this then you won't feel any of it uh, for the end that is at the heel you can use it to close up the gap a little bit more we even have two ends here so see pulling on this strand is doing the most damage control so i'm going to weave that one first just moving the other one out of the way and i just want to go around the gap like this and if there's still a gap you just want to go kind of in a circle You don't want to be pulling tight on this because then you'll see it on the outside but if you'll just use the same splitting technique and then changing directions it will be just fine And this is what it looks like from the outside now on the other side we don't have any ends there so I have this gap here I'm fine with that uh, but you could obviously just take a little bit of yarn and then um, sew that closed if it bothers you but it doesn't bother me and um, uh, it doesn't mean that you've done this wrong or anything so um so yeah just weave in all of the ends and then you can cut the ends then you could wash your sock but you probably just <laughs> put it on instantly um yeah so that was how to knit two socks at the same time Thank you for knitting these socks together with me. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please do let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye-bye.